Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Executive Cyber Education Podcast. If this is your first time listening, welcome. If you are a returning listener, I'm glad to see you again. And of course, welcome as well. In this podcast, we'll discuss, evaluate, and educate you on the topics of cybersecurity strategy, governance, risk, and compliance. I'm Dr. B, your host. Today's episode, we will discuss how to identify KRIs, key risk indicators. I'll discuss a simple way, an effective way to do it, by the way. There seems to be a lot of confusion on what to measure. And for a long time, subject matter experts believe we can't measure cybersecurity. Are you ready? Well, let's get started. First and foremost, as we always start, we're going to start with the definition of the keyword that we are discussing this podcast. In this case, KRI. So what KRI it means? Well, simply put, KRI is a measurement, is a measure to indicate the potential existent, the degree of, or trend of a risk. Let me say that again. So you simply put, KRI is a measure to indicate a potential existent degree or trend of a risk. So bottom line, KRI is a measuring tool, a trigger or a tripwire, if you will. It's, its job basically is to let you know if a risk has occurred or is emerging. So basically, it helps you to identify if something is going to happen or is about to happen so you can adjust. So organizations have several KRIs, uh, whether they call it as it or not. They do have in place, though. Actually, the real problem organizations face nowadays is that they have too many of them. Most of the time results in an unmanageable situation. So you have so many, which ones you pick? Are you picking the right ones? There's always a discussion. So this makes it difficult to identify the, the most significant one for your organizational risks. So example, so a risk management association, the RMA, has a library of KRIs consisting of thousands of risks, or of KRIs actually, are related to operational risk to their members, and their members are mostly banks. So making the real challenge is picking the correct trigger, the correct KRI for that relevant risk that you are monitoring. And that's the situation that you also face on your organization. So let's say you have a risk on your risk register and you're monitoring for those for your organization. Um, let's say information being exfiltrated. And to be honest, this is a common risk that every organization should have on their risk register by default. I mean, people are gonna steal your information at least. Uh, so it should be by default there. However, let's pick that one. Information is being exfiltrated from your, your organization. So the question here is, is starting from a top-down approach, you have the risk exfiltration of company information. What would you be what would be some of the key indicators for you to measure? So let's pick three here. Let's say phishing metrics, patching metrics, and let's say OS hardening standards. Let's say you your company is following the CIS critical control, critical security controls, right? To harden your Windows, your Unix, your Linux, and what have you, operating systems you have in your organization. Uh, so you measure those three and, and the compliance to it, right? How, how much phishing you're getting, how much phishing are getting through your defenses, patching metrics, uh, how how delayed your patches are, what critical applications are not being patched for how long, how many risk exceptions you have for those and whatnot. Uh, and OS hardening, uh, basically your security controls in your operating system or applications. So are you actually following? You know, there is deviations from it. So uh, th those are metrics that could, if if increase or decrease, have a, a direct impact or uh, or at least an indirect impact of of your risk that that we're discussing right now is exfiltration of corporate information. So there are just th these are just three just to get um so you get the gist right it's just three for an example, but you go down the list it could be many to one right. So all of these metrics measure a potential threat to your organization that could lead to losing company information. So 
these are KRIs, could serve as triggers for your risk analysis. And we're going to discuss a little bit about that as well. So another fact to keep in mind that your KRIs will come from several places. A common fallacy among cybersecurity professionals is to only see the world through cyber threats. Well, but more holistic approach is needed to properly, critically, and thoughtfully analyze potential triggers or KRIs. You will have to take in consideration human resources, people, right? Average time to fill vacancies, how often people leave the organizations, and so on and so forth. That has an impact on how you protect that information. People may start taking information to go to another company, you know, so, so you're going to have to monitor those. Second, finance. You have to see from that frame set as well. So budgeting, budgets to implement projects that mitigate risk on your risk registers, emerging projects, you know, short on budget, you know, we're going to tighten the belt. Now with COVID-19, most organizations will do that. What would be the real impact to your uh, uh, monitoring and the risk of stealing company information, right? Other angle you should also evaluate and bring to your analysis to the table is legal and compliance, new regulation, litigation, customer complaints. The other one is audits, right? Audit being the third uh, defense of any organization, audit findings, revised management plans, affecting mitigations that of your threats. So, Manager put, okay, I'm going to fix this audit finding in the next six months. And then all of a sudden, they, they push out for another 18 months. But if you are not connected uh, to that discussion, you will not know. Therefore, you have a blind spot. So you need to bring that forward. And of course, information technology, new technology, business transformation, DevOps, cloud computing, IoT, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Right? Those you need also to consider when you're doing a holistic thought process um, analysis of your KRIs and how those KRIs rolled up impact your risk. So here's the potential challenge you will face. A cultural and communication challenge. And let me break down this for you a little bit. Your cybersecurity team may say, hey, this is not my responsibility. Or the other departments don't have these metrics or the other departments don't want to collect this information and so on and so on. Um, so those are excuses. I mean, if this is the case, you need to start working in as one and working around your organization, bring this uh, uh, group together, try an education perhaps path for, so they can understand what's going on. So the fact, the fact of the matter is, you will not be able to completely understand the risk to your organization if you only see the world through the cyber threats. There are a lot, uh, there, there's a lot of anecdotal metrics that combined with critical thinking will provide a, a holistic view of your organization's risk. I mean, this is needed. So not only those risks, right? The ones that I mentioned to you in terms of uh, uh, the human factor, finance, legal compliance, audit, information technology, innovations. So those you need to also bring that. They all have an impact to your risk. In this case, stealing company information, right? So it is common, and, and this may be the case on your organization, uh, that, for example, collect vulnerability metrics like patch metrics. Now, and then provide to IT or the business units uh, in your organization and, and say, you need to fix this because this is a risk to the organization. Well, however, at the same time, not able to completely articulate the risk so that the business area or the business union or that, that, that part of your organization would understand. And that is a problem in itself. So a simple framework to explain the risk is the same framework you hopefully use to write your own performance goals. And that is to tie to the corporate mission or service delivery that your organization delivered to your customer. So corporate mission, risk, one, two, and three, etc., and an aggregate analysis, and then your KRIs. So that's from top 
down. Now, bottom up is you identify your KRIs, you aggregate the analysis, meaning that you take in consideration um, your metrics uh, for fishing and metrics for patching, match for us hardening, and then you combine with with information from human resources, finance, legal, audit, compliance, information technology, and then you put your critical analysis together. That's your aggregate analysis. Then you roll up that the aggregate analysis is what is the impact to that risk. In this case that we're discussing today, the risk would be stealing company information, and then what is that impact to the corporate mission or that service of delivery. So every business union in your organization, every project that has been approved, every effort, budget or not, every emerging project, regardless of what department, has one objective, and that is to deliver the corporate mission or service delivered to your customer. And that's the mindset of how you should frame every risk. This is the common business language, and it doesn't matter if your audience is uh, from IT, from cybersecurity, finance, legal, or even the board of directors. They will understand the risk you're trying to convey and the impact of the mission to the customer. Well, I hope this provides a, a little high level, a little clarity how these impacts and how uh, narrow-minded cybersecurity professionals perhaps may, may become consciously, unconsciously, what, what, whatever the case may be. So let's open that, that, that universe. Let's bring other metrics uh, for, for discussion, other measurements. KRIs are abundant in your organization. If they are not there yet, let's collect them. Let's share experience. Let's bring these uh, units, these departments on board and see, hey, uh, can we work together on this? You are already sitting on a data. Can you provide it to us? And and having those in connecting and have your team of risk professionals to put their thinking hat, right? Thinking that thought leadership, that critical thinking and putting together what is the impact here. And that's what is, those are the think tanks, right? That That's how you make it uh, uh, true that you bring to to the mission that attack, to attack the risks and then attack the corporate mission that has an impact to the organization. So I hope this this today was helpful for you. So bottom line, this is it for me today. I hope you enjoyed the episode today. I will provide a little bit more clarity for you. So, so for now, please make sure to subscribe and leave a, a review in iTunes so you don't miss any future episodes. I, I'm glad you stopped by today, by the way. And I appreciate you spending your time with me today. And, and, and like I always say, it's the most valuable currency nowadays. And that is time. And I appreciate that, truly. So see you next time. This is Dr. B, your host. I'm out.